Okay, here. Let him see the perspective. Put the screen back on this window like so. <laughs> There's only one combination that you can do that. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my sorrow. Now listen, these are scissors. So I was clip ship mailing a book to a friend on YouTube who I did some personal consulting and coaching. I do it on the weekends if I have time. And he was serious, and usually when I coach anybody, I'll send him a ED, uh, PDF version of stuff. He wanted the physical book. So, ta -da. I keep him right here. It's like an arsenal, man. Some shameless self-promotion. Love promoting my stuff, man. But anyways, um, I'm sitting here editing. What's up with me? How you doing? What's up? I'm sitting here editing uh, this commercial for Mr. Eric Reno that you saw in that last video. Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Eric Reno. Uh, check it out. Today we're going to load a roof that we make sure that they can withstand the weight because if not, you end up with a crack. Compressing GoPro footage right now. So doing other stuff. And neither of that stuff had to do with the books, the books, Audible books. People keep asking, what books are you reading? Well, if I go to audible.com, here, I'll just recommend anything by John Jantz, J-O-N, uh, J-A-N-T-S-C-H, phenomenal books, duct tape marketing. Um, if you're going through suffering in your life, life listening to anything by Eckhart Tolle, it's hard to make this video because my Snapchat's blown up like crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. If we could come in here and do a rant real quick. You like my rants, right? Let's rant about something. I'm walking through a dark hallway. Oh my god, it's so dark. Uh oh, I'm walking. I'm going to hide. Uh oh, here goes a dark hallway. You know, listen. In this video, I want to talk about how starting a small business 
can be a living hell and a living nightmare. A lot of new guys in the business, or at least the first six months in, are messaging me and sending me Snapchats and stuff saying, Keith, I'm doing all this stuff, it's not working, I'm having anxiety. How do you do this? Well, obviously in a nine to five job, when you get off work on Fridays, you get your paycheck. You don't get that in a business. So if you're drumming up and generating work and everything's soaking wet and you're busy and you're making all this money, then all of a sudden the work stops and you don't know why. And you understand that there's cycles and seasons and there's dry spots and dry spells. And maybe you went out and you financed something. Maybe you financed a brand new truck or maybe you spent money or you upgraded your lifestyle. But all of a sudden the money stopped. Or maybe you're smart and you don't upgrade your lifestyle because you don't know when that money is there. Right? <laughs> and... Um, that's why I wouldn't listen to people on social media saying stuff or people that even that you know saying, well, you got your business when you use your brand new trucks and this. I make three million a year. And I use it. Well, I mean, like, you're not that guy. Like, so I say, if you pay attention to your own stuff, meanwhile, being tortured, looking at how do these, how are they doing that? You know, uh, I'm only speaking from my own paradigm. I'm pretty, uh, I like to play it safe and be pretty conservative because the, how many people do you know that come on Facebook and YouTube and say, dude, I totally screwed up, I lost my business, um, uh, my truck got repoed or I got audited by the IRS or maybe we lost this big account because I was an idiot and I screwed this or we had, I didn't have insurance and then we like, we crashed something. Like you don't very often hear people coming on, they just get real quiet and they don't, they just disappear and to their failure. But I believe that there's so much to learn from the failures. Um, my biggest mistake this year that I could think of is I had all this plan to grow it. We got a third truck. I'm like, dude, we're going to be smashing it. We're going to have two full-time crews out and I'm going to be the guy out in the truck. And then what happened? My Google stuff was messed up running to the wrong phone number. Thousands of views to the wrong phone number. One second. Wife trying to call me. I'm trying to make a video. Hey, hon. I love you very much. I'm right in the middle of a YouTube video. Can I call you right back? Yep, come get me. Bye. One of my trucks is outside that I left here at the office, my third truck, and the battery's dead. Not a way for trying to kind of come get me. But anyways, uh, what other mistakes have I made? Uh, mistakes are good because you learn stuff. I've written everything I've on paper and business plans, and I've read all the books about business and systemizing and delegation and hire employees and have it all. And every single time that I've tried to do it, this is just where I'm at. So if you're way more successful than me and you want to comment in the video, well, that's because you need to do this and do this. And I figured out, well, I'm, I'm trying, dude. I mean, we're all trying. And it's a lot easier said than done. And we're always right on the edge of our comfort zone on the edge like we take we this is what i believe we do as people in our culture we take all of our success and we forget to pat ourselves on the back and say wow look what we accomplished we're always saying yeah but we don't have this yet yeah but we don't yeah but we're not doing this we don't because the funny thing about this whole small business game is like it's a it's a constant running uphill battle like you got to have all the balls and motions and have the proper insurances and have all the shit and that's expensive and you got to have a lot of work coming in and work that's priced right and then to to pay for all that and you got to understand marketing and advertising in order to get that work and you got to have a marketing and advertising budget and then you have a have, have to have a place where you can work like I got an office this is actual uh, a virtual shared office so yeah, it looks like I'm like some like I'm important or something in here, but no, I actually share this office because my office has just got paperwork all over the desk. But anyways, um, but see how I could have tricked you, and I could be like, yeah, this is my office, dog. Look at my new office. She, she. But I'm not gonna lie to you. This is not my office. <laughs> um, most of the time behind the YouTube thing, dude, I'm just as stressed out as you. Look, you can't. You come on. Look at my old videos, man. Like, some of are gray hairs, right? And you're going to have them, too, if you ain't already got them. And it's true. It's true. You will get gray hairs <laughs> because you're never off. You're always on. And people say, well, you got to have hours of operation, and you got to learn how to shut it off and just relax. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not at that point yet. I wish I could. Once in a while, I can really, really relax and sit on the couch with the wife trying to just watch some Netflix. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> but I'm sorry to make this about me, but I'm going through the same 
stuff, man. So I almost said a bad word there. Um, yes, if you got some ADD and the chemtrails they're spraying in the sky is messing you up and it's in the tap water and we're all freaking out, it's crazy. Now let's go in here. Maybe I'll just start ranting a little bit. Man, this, I've got like these nice cameras, but they think this LG, LGB10 is a great, look at that. Okay. I love this conference room. Okay. I don't know who else has touched that, but... <sighs> Anyways, now, you gotta get money. Yeah, I'm just gonna make some shit up. Right? You gotta get the money, but how do you get the money? You don't get the money by thinking, I gotta get money. You're gonna get no money. You gotta create, think, don't think, how can I get money, think, who are you to talk about money, Keith? You're not a billionaire. Well, it was flat broke living in the heart of Detroit and living in my car at one point, and I had no freaking money and I was stuck in a dead end job, and I figured out at least how to get this far. So if you're new and you don't have, like you, you could turn on Gary Vaynerchuk, you can listen to books by millionaires. You don't gotta listen to my ass, dude. What do I know, right? I got people saying, who is this Keith guy? I think he could write a book and do all these things. He's not a millionaire, he's a nobody. Hanging out the windows like a boss. <laughs> oh man, this is great. Now we're doing more window cleaning jobs right now. We're cleaning a pharmacy. All the inside of the windows all nice and clean. Hey, what's up? It's Keith Kelfus with the Window Cleaning Blueprint. If you ever have frustrations with uh, squeegees and deep inset ledges when you're cleaning windows because you can't get all the way to the bottom of the ledge because it's deep and you're reaching up with an extension pole, you know what I'm saying? I want to introduce you to the ledger. I got this from Detroit Sponge. The ledger is patented. Uh, Companion Tools and Corporation. A guy who was a window cleaner for many years had the same frustration and he actually invented this. There's like three different sizes, a short, medium, and then super long one. This is the medium size one and this has a swivel on it. So you hook it up to your extension pole and now you can get those deep inset ledges. See what I'm saying here? Yeah, done. Sheep, done. Thank <laughs> you.